the previous videos, we have mentioned about the components of the Heavy Structure Lab for Civil Engineering Discipline. It is quite an advanced lab which are used to simulate the looks acting onto the full-scale structural element and for performing the destructive tests in order to acquire their behaviors and response under the loads. In terms of the components in the heavy structure lab, so far we have discussed about the strong wall system, strong wall system, porter frame system. We also mentioned about the test setup as an extension to the discussions of the porter frame system. Everything needs to be properly designed and we mentioned that the safety of the researcher as well as the safety of the equipment are the utmost concern in conducting the experiment in the heavy structure lab. Let us proceed with the discussions of the actuators or the hydraulic jack system. It is basically meant to generate force acting onto the test specimens. You know that the actuator systems are the machines that generate physical movement by converting energy into the mechanical forces. The source of energy for the actuator can be from electric, A or hydraulic. As this kind of system is rather complex, it needs to be properly handled. The force is extremely high. Whichever mistake that you made in the lab may lead to disaster. Some can lead to losses of life, or injury, or damage to the equipment. Therefore, it is normally managed and operated by well-trained personnel. You have to work closely with the lab technicians if you need to use this system. There are quite a number of brands in the market which I believe you can check on your own. In general, there are several main types of the actuator system, such as the static load, dynamic load, and impact load. The system varies slightly due to the requirements to simulate different kinds of load. The static loads are referring to the loads which is applied and hold for a while in the static conditions and the increment of the loads are normally by staggered and gradual manner. The dynamic load are normally referring to the cyclic load or fatigue loads which are used in continuous oscillations of the loads between plus and minus. Let's say now you are testing to 50 kN loads the oscillations will be from 0 to 50, and then 50 to 0, then 0 to negative 50, negative 50 to 0, and then 0 to 50 again, continuously in the mode of oscillations. Sometimes it can be between the 0 to 50, 50 to 0, and then 0 to 50, and then 50 to 0. It doesn't necessarily to be always in plus and minus. There are also conditions that you simulate the load from 0 to 50 and then 50 to 20, 20 to 50, 50 to 20 and under the continuous oscillations. And that 50 kN load may increase after several cycles. All this is very dependent on what kind of load that you intend to simulate. If you are doing the structural testing, most likely you will know what I'm talking about here or sometimes there will be fatigue loads that means the continuous cyclic load it will be applied over millions of cycles in order to observe the damage being built out to determine the durability of the specimen under constant fluctuations of the loads for you to use this kind of actuator system you need to have some knowledge in terms of the system components it is always good of you to know this, seeking advice from the technical personnel or asking for some manuals to read through to know what they are capable of, especially in terms of the maximum capacity, as well as some precautions 
to ensure the systems are always in good conditions and not to overstress the system. The system component involves the actuators themselves, hydraulic power supply HPS, the pumping and pressure piping systems, the cooling towers, the control systems and others. This control system may involve the hardware and also the software. You know that most of the actuators are relying on the hydraulic principles to generate load adding onto the members. It is also a good practice of you before the testing, have a routine check on the piping and pressure systems, any leakage, any visible damage before you start the testing. Your technicians will advise you to do so also because when you start applying load onto the specimen, you will see the pressure build up within the piping system. Whichever damage may lead to bursting of the pipe, which can be very dangerous. Make sure you don't twist the flexible pipe. Make sure there are no heavy stuff pressing onto those piping. You will need to make sure those piping are in good conditions. Make sure there are no fault lift standing on the piping system. All this can be very dangerous. These are the considerations that you need to consider related to the actuator system. This includes the force capacity in terms of the compressions and tensions. Always check for the labeling or the notice or check the model. If you know the model and the brand, you will be able to know their design capacity in terms of the compressions and tensions. Some let have those specifications properly outlined and put it as a notice so that you know that the maximum allowable compressions and tension force applied onto the specimen. So that you use the right actuators or you design your specimen not to exceed any of the respective lift force capacity. You need to consider the stroke. The meaning of stroke is referring to the degree of extensions of the actuators. There is usually a limit and you need to make sure the maximum movement happening within the specimen during the testing must be within the reach of the actuator. Those details and specifications will be given in the specifications of the actuators. Next, you might need to check also the frequency. First, you need to know that whether you need to test specimen with high frequency. You cannot use the static actuator to test for dynamic load. There is a maximum allowable speed as well as the frequency for those actuator. And if you are testing for the dynamic load, you need to check the frequency reachable by that particular actuators. You might need to consider the age of the actuator as well. Let's say now the actuator has been servicing the university for more than 20 years. Although you know the specifications, However, due to wear and tear, the actuator might not be able to reach up to the high frequency that you intend it to be. This one you will need to consider the capability of those equipment. And whether the actuator system is in good conditions, it is also very much dependent on the maintenance given to those systems. Always check with the lab technicians or the lab manager to know the capability. If impact loads is involved, that means you might need to check the acceleration rate. Because you are talking about a significant magnitude of load being applied onto the specimen within very short time. This requires an extreme acceleration rate for you to simulate the impact load. You have to check for the calibrations of the systems check whether they are within the calibrated durations in order to ensure the result as acquired from the system is accurate and reliable. 
check if the calibrations has already been expired before you start conducting the test. Ensure the system is properly maintained and also know the safety features of the actuator systems. Next, we talk about the hydraulic jack system. A typical hydraulic jack system will have a hydraulic cylinder, a pressure hose, a manual hydraulic pump or an automatic hydraulic pump and there will be valve as well as the pressure gauge. This is the most simplified versions of the hydraulic jack system. Its components and the functions are listed here. You know that the hydraulic jack system is using the principles of hydraulic to generate force. That means it's going to involve oils within the hydraulic cylinders in order to generate pressures which is later converted into force acting onto a specimen. There will be a reservoir or oil tank to hold the hydraulic oil so that it can be freely discharged into the hydraulic cylinder in order to generate force. There will be a hydraulic pump which can be in the form of automatic pump or in the form of manual pump. The pump is used to pressurize the hydraulic fluid and force the fluid through the system. This will generate force acting on the specimens. Based on my personal experience, I would prefer the manual hydraulic pump as it is easier for me to control the rate as well as the accuracy in terms of the pressures to be accepted within the hydraulic cylinder. Automatic pump is also okay, but you have to be careful. You need to properly utilize the valve in controlling the rate in preventing it to overshoot the intended load. To me, the manual hydraulic pump is more easily manageable. Next, it will be the hydraulic cylinder. It is used to convert the hydraulic pressure into linear displacement. By generating the pressure within the hydraulic cylinders, force will be generated onto the specimens. There will be pressure control valve, which appear in different forms of valve. One is pressure control valve, Another one is flow control valve and there will be directional control valve. Each of the valve here have different functions. Either is to limit the system pressures to protect the system component, to adjust the flow rate of the fluid in the pipeline, as well as to control the directions of the fluid flow. There will be pressure gauge in order to measure and displace the pressure in the system. There is a wide variety of usage of the hydraulic pump together with the hydraulic cylinders. There are many used to generate load onto the specimen and those load need to be measured by the data acquisition systems. In some universities, they have shaking tables not many universities have the luxury of having this. The shaking tables is a moving platform caused by a hydraulic dynamic system in order to simulate the earth movement generated by the earthquake that result in the response of the structures. The shaking table can be used to conduct experimentations in structural dynamics simulating the earthquake ground motions or other force excitations. These are two examples of the shaking tables where there are platforms which are going to move in the appropriate frequency with certain design accelerations to the intended degree of freedoms and normally the model of the structures are constructed or installed onto the platform 
in order to observe their response under the movement of the shaking table. These are the considerations. You need to consider the dimensions of the shaking tables as it will govern the size of your specimens. You might need to know the maximum weight of the test specimen so that it functions properly. You need to know the control mode whether it is displacement based or the acceleration feedback based as well as the degree of freedom whether the movement of the shaking table is one directional or two directional perpendicular to each other or is it going to involve the rotational rotational in which plane this will lead to different levels of degree of freedom you also need to know the stroke which is related to the maximum allowable movement of the shaking table as well as the frequency how fast the oscillations within a second as well as the peak velocity of the shaking tables